All right, this is going to be Zechariah in nine minutes. Uh, open your Bibles if you would. I'm going to ask you to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. What we have here is something that's very, very interesting. The, the situation is Paul is explaining to the church in Thessalonica what happens to those who die in the faith. We're going to look at chapter 4, verse 16. This was a church that didn't have a lot of time with Paul. Paul gave them the gospel. They believed the gospel, but they didn't have sufficient time with him to understand some of the finer things and the, the deeper aspects of the Christian faith. And one of those was what would happen to people when they die? What would happen to believers, those who are in Christ when they die? And Paul tells them. He writes to them and he says in verse 16, the Lord himself will des descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. So what you have here is a, a description from Paul about what happens uh, at the end of this age. Paul is describing the situation in which the church will be raised and will be with Christ. They enter into a seven year period of fellowship with Christ they enter into a period of fellowship with Christ in preparation for descent on this earth where Christ establishes his millennial kingdom. What is clear when you read your Bibles, you read your Old Testament, you read your New Testament, that the majority of Jews that are on the earth at that time are not believers. And so Paul has instructions for them. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be going through all 14 chapters of Zechariah in the next 10 to 12 weeks. And what we have here is a perspective of the end times that aligns well with what we're studying in Revelation. These are God's words to the Jew of how he will take the people of Israel from where they are at the time of Zechariah and get them all the way to where they will be with Christ in his millennial kingdom. And so this is a very Jewish perspective. Again, it aligns well with our study in Revelation. The Hebrew word zakar means to remember. And so Zakar Yah means Yah or Yahweh, the Lord God remembers. And what does God remember? He remembers his covenant promises to his people. These are the covenant promises he made to Abraham and everybody who came after him. This is the, the story that God has of his redemptive plan for his people. And his purpose for them. So starting with Abraham and then going on from, from there for their time in Egypt and all the way through the conquest of the promised land and the time of the prophets and the time of the judges and the time of the kings. The time when the northern kingdom is divided from the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom is taken into exile and they stay in exile. The southern kingdom remains. They are taken into exile for 70 years and they come back. God wants his people to know that my promises to you will be fulfilled. My plan is still in place and it is going to be executed. I am going to bring it to fruition. The book of Zechariah starts with a small group of people that have returned from Babylon. They've returned from exile in Babylon. The, the time is about 520 BC and they don't have a king. They don't own the land. They don't have any money. They don't have any power. They don't have any resources. They don't have much of anything. What we're going to do here is we're going to see how God is merciful and kind to help these people understand that even in your poor blight of a situation, I am faithful to everything that I said I would do. And it aligns again with God's plan in the New Testament. So we're looking at this today because it's very important for us to understand that Israel the centerpiece of, of God's plan to, to let his glory be known to the world in the Old Testament is the same plan that he has and it aligns well with the same purpose that he has for his people in the church today. God has one plan. He has one plan that involves redeeming Israel in the long run. He has that very same plan involves the establishment of the church and the displaying of the church and the Gentiles in the church alongside the Jew reigning together with Christ in his millennial kingdom. So as we're going through Revelation, we're looking at this and we see from a Gentile perspective how it is that, that God has sustained. He takes the church, he takes the church out of this world. And then there's a period of seven years of trial and suffering called Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation. There is a terrible time of trial for the Jew. And God is going to be returning. He's going to send his son to establish his rule and his reign on this earth. Zechariah really covers three periods in time. 
it covers the period of time of Zechariah itself. And Zechariah speaks to the people through um, God's word. He speaks to them about what God is going to do for them in that time. They had just returned from exile in Babylon. God speaks to them through Zechariah saying, I am going to establish you. So that's one period of time that God is speaking about to Israel through Zechariah. But he also speaks to them about the time of Jesus' earthly ministry. When Jesus would come, their own Messiah would come and he would live on this earth. And he spells out how it is that his own people will reject him and they will crucify him. So Zechariah is speaking about a time that is future from him, but that is in the past for us. But then Zechariah speaks of a, a third period of time, a time that is future from Zechariah's perspective and from ours. It's a time when Christ is going to come again. Messiah Jesus is going to rule and he is going to reign. It's very important for us that we understand the mindset and what's going on in the minds and the hearts of these people who are being returned to their land. And these are the very people that God is using to tell them, I am going to be faithful to what it was that I promised you that I would do. We need to understand how these people are thinking. Most of these people who came back from exile in Babylon, when the nation was exiled for 70 years, were actually born in Babylon. They spoke their own language, but they actually didn't know how to read the Hebrew language because everything they saw that was in writing was in Aramaic. So they didn't even have the ability to read their own language. They didn't have the ability to read their own scriptures. So they were a people who just could not take in the truth of God's word themselves because they didn't have the ability to read it. You also consider the spiritual condition of these people. For 70 years, they had no temple. They had no ability to actually live out what God told them they must do to remember him. God had clear instructions for them. When you sin, there is a sacrificial system for you. You bring your sacrifice to the priest. You offer that sacrifice. And that is an ongoing, constant daily reminder to you that you actually need a better substitute. You need a lasting substitute. You need Christ. They didn't have that for 70 years. These people never had that at any point in their life. So they don't really have anything to go on. They don't have any background or anything. It's also true that what they don't have is certain books in the Old Testament. Again, this is about 520 BC. They don't have the book of Haggai. They don't have Zechariah itself. They don't have the book of Ezra. They don't have Nehemiah. And they don't have First and Second Chronicles. God gave them First and Second Chronicles because this is the story where God proves to them, you are my people. You open your Bible to First and Second Chronicles and First Chronicles opens with eight chapters of genealogy. This is what God is doing here. He is saying, I remember you. I remember that you are my people. I have not forgotten you when you were in Babylon. You are my people. This is my proof to you. These are your tribes. This is your lineage. Zechariah was a young man. He was a man who was probably born in Babylon and came back. And God used this young man to help Israel understand that I will be faithful to my promises with you. I have not forgotten them. So let's do this. Let's turn to the book of Zechariah. Let's turn to chapter one. The way you find it is you go to the gospel of Matthew and then you go left two books, past Malachi to Zechariah chapter one. What I want us to look at is the situation, what God is saying to the people of Israel at the time of their return from exile. You learn in verse one that the king that is ruling, the point of reference is the rule of Darius. This is Darius the Mede. This is the man who conquered Babylon. Babylon has just been conquered and a decree has been made and the Jews are allowed to return. It's the second year of his reign. Look at what God says through Zechariah in verse two. Yahweh was very wrathful against your fathers. So the attention here is on the generations that caused Israel to be taken into exile in the first place. Yahweh was wrathful against them. Therefore say to them, thus says Yahweh of hosts, return to me, declares Yahweh of hosts, that I may return to you. So God is telling Israel in the time of Zechariah, you need to return to me. So they were taken into exile. They lived there for 70 years. They have returned to the land, but in their hearts, they have not returned to God. This is the kind of people that we're dealing with here. He says, return from your evil ways and from your evil deeds. 
This is what God spoke to the previous generations. Turn from your evil ways. Return to me. He's giving the same message to the people who have just returned to the land. That's the situation they're in when it begins. Again, it's about 42,000 people. Not very many. Most of them are in and around and near Jerusalem. And they need to return to God. Let's move from there to the very end of the story and see how it turns out. And this is where we're going to be going over the course of the next several weeks. Let's go to chapter 14. This is, just, this is, the, just, this is the description, the description of what will happen when Jesus comes and establishes his rule and his reign on the earth. This is the Jewish version of what takes place in Revelation 19. We're going to get there later in the year, probably, or maybe next year. And we'll see from Revelation what it is that God is doing. Verse 3, Yahweh will go forth and fight against those nations. And these are the nations that have come and gathered themselves surrounding his people in Israel, in Jerusalem. Verse 4, on that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in front of Jerusalem on the east. And the mountain will move toward the north and the other half towards the south. Jesus is establishing himself. This is Messiah Jesus. This is the Messiah that, that Israel was promised. He is coming and he is going to establish himself in Jerusalem on the Mount of Olives. The following verses begin to describe what takes place as Jesus actually does establish his rule and his reign on the earth. When you get to verse 9, you see the final situation that is here. Yahweh, that's Jesus, the Messiah. It's the second person of the triune Godhead. Yahweh will be king over all the earth. In that day, Yahweh will be the only one and his name one. The following verses give more detail about how it is that Jesus actually establishes his rule and his reign by defeating those enemies that have gathered around Jerusalem. As you read verse 14, you see that God gives the Jews themselves the privilege of fighting together with him to establish that victory. And look down at verse 16. This helps us understand a lot about what is taking place in the millennial kingdom. This helps the Jew understand that God's design was not just for them. God's design was for them and for all of the nations. God promised Abraham, you will be a blessing to all of the nations. And this is where you see this come to play. It will be that any who are left of all the nations that went against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, and to celebrate the Feast of Booths. So you will have nations all over the world coming together to worship the one Messiah, King Jesus. You will have Jews living on the land. You will have Gentiles throughout the world serving Christ as co-regents ruling around the world on his behalf, ambassadors for him. So the story of Zechariah is a story of how God promises a meager, beleaguered, small group of Jewish people who have returned to the land, how he will take them and in his time, in his way, he will accomplish what he intends to establish his Messiah, his king, their king, their Messiah on the earth. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And I hope that it fits us with a clear understanding of, of what it is that God is going to do for his people. Let me pray. Father God, I thank you that you are the one and the only God. I thank you that you created this world in perfection and order and all of it was good, and all of it was right. Lord God, we are the ones who have sinned. We are the one who distorted what was good. Yet, Lord God, you are sending your son. You are sending your son to establish his rule and his reign on this earth, that all may be made right. Lord, I pray that you would grow us in our hunger and our thirst for understanding that truth. I pray that you will exalt yourself in this process, and I pray it in Christ's name. Amen.